This is Fountain Street Church. It's hard to find the best ones, but somehow, like I said, you'll, you'll hear what I'm trying to say even when the words Here, are. we strive to free the mind, grow the soul, and change the world. Here, there is freedom to doubt and freedom to believe. Here, you can find a house of prayer for all people. The Swallow Up Jonah. Welcome to Fountain Street Church. Join us on the journey. Well, we had some wild weather this week, didn't we? I guess that's what this global climate change thing is all about. Uh, But we also had plenty of wild weather and human drama as well. You can always rely upon Washington, D.C. to produce a soap opera when you're not finding anything else on TV. And even in City Hall, we had an armed showdown this week. If you don't know what I'm talking about, ask someone else. Polarized politics now seem as normal as extreme weather. We just tighten our shoelaces and pull in our belts a little more and just get used to it. It seems every issue sends people to battlements. Nobody actually comes together. They flee to their forts and then hurl rocks at each other. Well, if nothing else, the weather gave me the brief smell of soil, which I like a day without having to wear gloves, 
I have Raynaud's syndrome, so my fingers are always numb in the winter, so I didn't have to do that for a day. And we had last week's soup. My wife and I made soup last week for all of you, and there were leftovers. And we ate them all week, and it was better every day. But you know something when you think about it? I deliver a sermon every week, which in general is pretty much indistinguishable from almost any other sermon. An effort to try to find something worth holding on to. It's a little bit like meatloaf in that it has to be prepared, served. But if you look back, you can't remember too many of them, can you? But they are all nourishing. They got you through the week. My job is not to feed you forever, but to get you through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, if I'm lucky. And sometimes, like soup, leftovers can taste even better. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be found true in thy sight, thou who art my rock and my redeemer. Now, every January, I reimagine our principles, those things that are true for us across time. That thing you heard earlier from nine words, free the mind, grow the soul, change the world. And I imagine how they would look in the future, how they could look, might look. I put myself into a place in the future. In previous years, I've offered concrete projects. One of them is the early worship service we do now, and we had a really good one today. And it's a whole different congregation over there. Not only all different people, they like doing it that way. If we closed it up, they wouldn't come here because that's their church. One of the things I suggested several years ago was that we turn our offering over to the community because we were already spending nearly that much in the budget. And that's something about which I hear people boast now. That was a project, two wonderful and successful projects. There's a third one that I'm still working on. But this year, instead of talking about projects, I'm going to talk about ways in which we can do church differently. Changing our way, not our want. And that's important. If you were here last week, I said, we got to do money differently. Because for year after year, we've been running a perennial debt. Not a debt, we don't borrow money. We don't raise enough money to do the things we want, so we do less or we patch it together. That gets really tired, I got to tell you. Keeps you from going forward. And I did a thought experiment that scared the blazes out of some of you. But that, that made it a memorable sermon, didn't it? Right? I realized that our gap from year to year is almost exactly the size of my salary. So I said, okay, I can solve it in one sort. That was an experiment in the mind. But it really helped. It helped me. Because as I quoted last week, Richard Dawkins, the great atheist and scientist, said, thought experiments are not supposed to be realistic. They're supposed to clarify our thinking about reality. And what thinking about that did for me was to say, the mere thought that I would willingly hand over my salary tells me that your future is as important to me as my future. In some ways.